Okay. Um, so I have the unenviable task of being the last person before lunch, and you know, here I am asked to talk about in a sort of technical session. And whenever I end up talking about archive, it always ends up being more about people and environment and systems than it does technical, because that seems to be the key thing. But actually, I noticed that that's basically what Jennifer was talking about as well. Um, since we haven't done lots of really great annotation work, I got my plane flight to spend a bit of time thinking about a bunch of excuses for why we haven't done this work and what I'm hoping to get out of this session. Um, so a wish list. Now, First, there was a reflection on what is, what is archive. You know, it's a collection of archive articles, quite a few of them. Um, that old collection is probably not the most important thing. Um, you could argue it's a means of promoting open access, but it was never intended as, you know, that was the driver for the creating archive. It's just that doing things via open access is the best way to do scholarship. Um, hopefully, it's not a huge waste of time and money. What I came up with was it's an efficient, rapid, centralized scholarly communication system. And I'd just like to drill down for a second to try and pull out things that are relevant. Um, it's efficient. It's very low cost. Um, that means we don't have much effort to spend. It's rapid. One day turn around, it has to be automatic. Centralized actually turns out to be quite important. It is the one go-to place for scholars in a number of disciplines, which means actually we have a, a nice opportunity to do things to help a community uh, in one place. And it's scholarly. It's not designed for the great unwashed to communicate their ideas to the scholarly domain. Um, it's designed for communities to talk to a first approximation within themselves. Um, the other thing I was going to say is it's also embedded in a set of other communities with other tools. So, we, for example, we have very close collaborations with the Astrophysical Data Service at Harvard and the Inspire collaboration involving Slack and others. Um, and we really try and sort of sit within this environment of many, many services uh, to be part of that system. And I sort of think of annotation of how can we interact with other players to do parts that we don't have to do them ourselves. Um, I see two key use cases that I would like to, to think about. One is, how do we make archive work nicely with these great tools that are being developed for people to take their own private notes or to share them in small groups and whatever? And this seems I think, from what I'm hearing, relatively straightforward. Um, but then the really big one is how do you enable sort of more open commentary and discussion? And as soon as you start talking about that, you get into tons and tons of issues about control, ownership, identity, authority. What's the community ready to do? And that's, I think, where we'll, uh, we'll spend most of the time. So in many ways, Archive and the scholarly communication world is, is really stuck in the, the age of print. You know, we have PDFs, but we have articles. The comments on archive are like little articles. Almost everything people are submitting is still tech or PDF. You know, it's just print without the paper, right? Uh, we sadly have no facility for lightweight comment. I'll talk for a moment about an attempt to, to play with Facebook and a little more about some experiments with trackbacks and what they might tell us about how commentary could work. Um, so first, you know, what formats does archive use? I'll just drill down to the top portion of that slide. If you look at the red and the green together, we are still 90% uh, text submissions, which is kind of remarkable, actually. Uh, and the rest is PDF, so it's basically all static stuff. We've made very little progress in moving to sort of more flexible formats that might sub support more easily granular discussion. A few years ago, we spent a bunch of time developing a Facebook app, and you could do the usual things and put a comment, and it would go. Uh, all the comments earlier about being concerned about that sort of little walled garden of Facebook and how stable and useful it is apply. The one that actually killed it for us is the fact that there's so much churn in the Facebook API that just keeping the thing up to date was a huge pain. Um, that really speaks to a sort of web-based solution where we aren't writing it into everyone's app. We're providing an API to interface to other tools. Um, so sort of taking a step back to sort of what we're trying to do with this notion of open commentary, I would say that science depends upon argument and critical review to establish truth. People who discuss what science means might want to nuance that a bit. But while services like Archive have changed the openness and speed and the linkability, which is, is pretty important, they haven't really changed the sort of granularity of discourse or the way it, it happens. 
Um, everyone who looks at this says that, yes, there should be commenting and discussion systems associated with articles. People have been requesting this feature for years, and it is absolutely terrifying. Um, the reason it is absolutely terrifying to us is that this is the graph of the number of submissions per year. I apologize that my plane didn't have Wi-Fi, so it's not extended. I had only the data on my laptop. So about 80,000 submissions per year will come through Archive. And we have approximately two humans to help these users with all their problems, which means that we don't give them much help. You know, the budget per article is about $7 for the whole of Archive, you know, the tech side and the user help side. Um, so it's a completely different scale to the sort of journal publishing world. Um, comments really get people riled up. We did this experiment with blog links when trackbacks came out. And our first stab was this little thing, I don't have a point, but five blog links it says there, right? It's pretty hidden. One is a very soft star. And it's still like that, actually. Um, the reason is, you know, our, our first reason was, oh, we don't know how to fit that into the screen real estate. The second reason was, well, when the titles of the comments are crackpots, contrarians, and free market ideas, and we already had complaints that these are sort of connected but hidden away, the thought of having that, you wrote that, what, next to my paper, and dealing with those problems is the one that really scares us. So I think that's a hard thing in the sort of completely open, someone can write something on my paper that I really care about. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. If you, if you follow those links, there's a very interesting discussion by uh, Jack Disler uh, on the archive trackback system and things and gets into a slinging match against particular people. And <laughs> further down that thread, it says, OK, we're even having to cut off this comment thread on this other blog because we're starting to talk about Lubosch model instead of the commenting system. Um, so what do I want to get out of this? I would like to discuss with people a bunch of sort of techie issues about how I best reflect archive structure out in the linked web to enable annotations, and happy to talk about that. But the sort of bigger scale is I want to get a sense, which I'm already getting, of what are the best tools to support the sort of personal and closed group annotation. I'd like to really explore the boundary between the web and PDF and find out how you can make those two work together. I'm really interested to see some of the notions of annotations tied to particular points in text so they support multiple formats. But in the scholarly world, I think PDFs are going to be with us for longer than we might hope. So we'd, we'd better make them and the web work nicely together. And secondly, I really want to talk with people who have ideas about how we support more open annotation in the scholarly world without having this huge user support nightmare of dealing with, I don't want that next to my paper. And to me, that seems to rely upon some notion of sort of limited communities, Facebook in the scholarly and open world, and how does that work? There are huge numbers of people trying to build social network systems in the scholarly world, but of course, everyone wants to build their own system, trap people within it, and it seems very hard to make one of these work in a sort of distributed system that is, is open and everyone can buy into. So thanks very much.